Hi everyone, MindBlank here, welcome back to the channel and this is the little brother of the 2400G, the Ryzen 3 2200G with integrated Vega graphics. You know that last time I looked at the 2400G and actually found the Vega 11 inside it really impressive. But this time this Ryzen 3 2200G wiped clean that previous impression and took it a step further and I'll clearly explain why in the following minutes. This time I will skip the Raven Ridge primer, but if you want more info, make sure to check out the 2400G review first. In short, this is a 4 core 4 thread Ryzen CPU with a 3.5 GHz base clock, a 3.7 GHz boost clock, 65 watts TDP and joined by a Vega 8 GPU. And this means it has 8 compute units or 512 total stream processors. I am happy to say that the IMC integrated memory controller is still clearly miles better than on previous Ryzen 5s and 3s. The 2200G stopped at 3466MHz much like its bigger brother which is an impressive 500 plus MHz more than the 2933 that Ryzen 3s were able to pull off. You get the same 4 megabytes level cache, a slight IPC boost and the Vega 8 GPU of course, so you are giving up 3 Vega CUs and 4 threads for $70 less. The CPU is only $99 with the boxed Wraith cooler. This time I tested on the Gigabyte AB350N Gaming, an ITX motherboard that actually proved to be really capable. VRM temperatures are in check at around 80 to 82 Celsius during full throttle. My BDI Team Group Extreme RAM 3600 CL18 2020 kit had no issues in being pushed to 3466 CL16 1717 for testing on this board. And strangely, I was free of the GPU down clocking I was seeing earlier on the ATX Big Brother AB350 Gaming 3. I am still using the Arctic Freezer 33 eSports cooler since it provides excellent headroom for a mere $30 and I actually got this cooler especially for Raven Ridge testing. And while we are on this subject, let's talk about this headroom. You'll see the Vega 8 greatly benefit from overclocking. This is also possible on the Wraith cooler mind you, but I had to stop at 1440 MHz on the GPU. Respectable though, but any higher and temperatures above 66 Celsius would invariably cause crashes or lockups, sometimes immediately, sometimes after a few minutes of gaming. With the freezer I can get to 1600MHz on lower SOC slash GPU voltage at the same time and will top out at 1675MHz although at a rather high 1.25V SOC. But GPU temperatures at 1675MHz are around 52-54 Celsius so well below the uh oh area. Vega 8 is clocked at 1100MHz as opposed to 1240MHz on the 2400G and believe it or not this is kinda the only thing setting them apart in performance. Yes, I found the extra CUs offer no or negligible impact on your frame rates. Clock for clock Vega 8 is almost equal to Vega 11 as you can clearly see from these benchmarks. If you're wondering why this is happening, the answer is easy. Both of these GPUs are extremely bandwidth starved even when running 3466MHz RAM. And judging by how close they are together when clock for clock, it might very well be possible that even a 6 CU Vega could offer similar or identical performance to the 8 and 11 CU versions. This is some really nice food for thought on a possible Ryzen based Athlon with a 6 CU Vega priced at $70. That would be monstrously good based on the numbers we are seeing here on the Vega 8 and there's actually no game where Vega 11 is clearly pulling ahead. I mean the cases where it's actually ahead can easily be chalked up to normal benchmarking variants. Considering the performance level of these integrated GPUs it's really a shame to not overclock and personally I chalk up the extra $20-$30 for a capable air cooler to extract every bit of performance out of this GPU. If you're curious, the performance delta between 1440MHz GPU clock on the Wraith and 1675MHz max on the Freezer 33 is around an average 10%, so it's worth it when you're slightly dipping below 60fps and heavy Overwatch firefights let's say and you need the extra boost. Ultimately when testing on the iGPUs I found no performance difference between the 8 threaded 2400G and the 4 threaded 2200G. I know Ryzen set a high bar on core count but let's not forget that it's not even a year ago that unlocked 4 core 4 threaded CPUs were being pushed as being just a-okay for gaming. 
Now let's take a short look on productivity on the Ryzen CPU inside the 2200G. As opposed to the Ryzen 3s of yesteryear, it comes with a better clock, lower price, improved precision boost 2.0, much better IMC, and I can't stress this enough, and a free GPU nonetheless. It's clearly faster clock for clock than the 1200 and 1300X despite the level 3 cache deficit. You're not going to be running any sort of really heavy workload on it, like 3D design, video editing, but even if you do, you're not going to be dissatisfied. So considering these results, I have to give the 2200G the clear winner award here, since the level of performance you're getting out of a $99 APU is downright insane. I'm seriously impressed with this CPU, much more than I was with the 2400G. Let's see what else is contributing to this great impression. Just how good is Vega 8 when overclocked to running high-speed RAM and a 3.8 GHz Ryzen alongside it? To test this I've installed some of the more demanding and recent games I consider worth playing. Doom's a ton of fun, some of the most fun actually I've had in the last two years with a game. And yes, I am running 83% scaled res, so 900p effectively, and I will be doing this for all the following graphically demanding games. But just look at the performance we're getting at these settings, and above that 900p, it's not looking bad and this is coming from a guy that's playing at 3440 by 1440 ultra settings in all these games. It looks good, it plays well, there's no input lag. Regarding the choice and settings, I'd rather play at 900p medium with higher frame rates than at 1080p low with around 20% less frame rate. But whatever, it's up to your preferences. I set these games up how I'd play them and I'm amazed by what I'm getting. Take a look at Wolfenstein 2 which is one of the best looking games of last year. It's running smooth at high settings and looking great at the same time. I mean, I hook this system up to my living room TV and 12 feet away these games look gorgeous and play excellent for my controller skills. Witcher 3 is seeing lower frame rates than the other titles, granted, but when this game came out it was killing last gen GPUs by pushing them to premature heat induced failure, so I'd say above 30 FPS is pretty much legit as the kids say. I think there's only a handful of modern titles that will be so hard on the GPU that will require you to drop down to 720p low settings just to get a decent 30 FPS. I can't think of another popular title right now other than maybe PUBG that is going to do this, but feel free to let me know in the comments. Battlefield 1 is running a 64 player map and I'm not seeing any sort of issues from the 4 threaded Ryzen here, which is keeping up just fine. 50 FPS or thereabouts is excellent for the settings I'm running and I'm not seeing crazy dips, I'm not getting hitching and if I wouldn't generally suck at this game, I'd even be having some fun while playing it. Anyway, I'm going to wrap it up now and if it's not clear from what I've been saying the past minutes, the Ryzen 2200G is the star of this show. You get the same GPU performance but with less heat, a great Ryzen 4 threaded CPU, an excellent boxed cooler and the price tags $99. I'd recommend anyone to orient themselves towards the 2200G unless they really need the extra 4 threads right now on the 2400G and get yourself an inexpensive cooler around $20-$30 to $30 and overclock the GPU and CPU. You'll be seeing around 20-25% to 25 more performance in games, which is, you know, nothing to say no to. As usual, RAM prices are going to remove the fun out of an awesome $300 gaming build, but that's another discussion altogether. Don't forget to leave me your thoughts on all of this below, and while you're at it, check out my Twitter, Instagram and Patreon pages, linked in the description, if you want to become a mind blank tech backer. Thank you for supporting this channel by subscribing, and I'll see you in the next one everybody, bye bye.